It's Colin. It's been a minute. So sorry for the delay. It's been an interesting 2022. I've had a couple different direct reports. I'm right in the midst of 2023 strategic planning. I am, however, starting to get back to a normal schedule. I definitely want to get back to the videos. I owe everybody, if you've been reading the comments, a Campus EVP and VXLAN fabric series. You're going to see elements of that today, but you're not going to see the first video in the series because recently I came across a problem. And not so much a problem as much as expected behavior that came under the disguise of a very strange looking bug. I'm going to show you that today and I'm going to maybe let you guess a little bit at what might be broken and then I'm going to fix it and then I'm going to walk through breaking it with you and then I'll show you how to diagnose this if it happens to you. So let's jump over to the lab environment and get started. Like I said, I'm going to do an entire series on campus fabrics. The lab you're looking at right now is actually three separate campus fabrics. One, two, three. And this is for a specific university use case. The colored box up here is a pair of MPLS PE routers running VERP for L3 southbound. So all of these fabrics here are actually just bridged overlay L2 only. This is quite a lot to consume. We're just focused up here for now because the problem we're looking at is with this host trying to reach anything else. And in fact, this is all L3 reachability. We're specifically going to be focusing on this host trying to reach this host coming from this source address, this dot 10 in the third octet, trying to reach this dot 20 in the third octet. We might even try this dot 30 here. So let's just first walk through what is actually going on. As I mentioned, this is an EVPN VXLAN bridged overlay, which means this is all L2. As far as network traffic is concerned, this is a single logical layer two device. Up here, we've got a pair of routers. They're running VERP. There are four routed subnets that are defined. We're only going to be playing with one of them today, and that's going to be this dot 10, as I mentioned earlier. It's kind of an interesting design, and it does work. The VERP signaling for mastership between these two routers actually goes through the fabric. So Looking at this ESI lag, you'll see that that line is purple. And looking at this one, that is green. And if you're not familiar with ESI lag concepts, I will explain it when I do my video series on this. All you need to know right now is that these are being viewed as discrete links, which means that they are not sharing LACP control plane state. It works fine. This router reaches this router via the fabric which should be fine because like I said, the fabric is just L2 as far as the network is concerned. All right, now host one wants to ping host two. And we're going between a dot 10 and a dot 20 on that third octet, which means we need to hit L3. This host will come up here. And right now, this router two is our verp master. I'll show you that. And this router one is our verp backup. So this will come up here and it'll come over here and it'll route up here. Well, let's give it a shot. Broken. All right, so network troubleshooting 101. Can I ping the gateway? Ping 10.0.10.1. I cannot. I wonder if I can ping the verbs, uh, the actual IPs, like, pardon me, the real IPs. You know, we've got a real IP assigned to each. That dot two is for RTR1. And the dot three is for RTR2, and we certainly can. So we can reach the real IP addresses, but we can't reach the VIP address. Let's run an ARP, show ARP, and see what that IP is. All right, here's our VIP, here's our VERP. And if you just saw this MAC address without anything else, you should be able to identify it as a VERP VIP MAC because this MAC address needs to be generated. And these first six hex tets are a dead giveaway that this is a verb VIP. I've recorded that over here. So now that we have this information, we can start looking at 
where that MAC address lives and how it is forwarding through the fabric. Jumping back over here, we'll start by figuring out which link this is going up. I'm pretty sure it's this XC009. So I did mention that things get pretty buggy looking and that has to do with the fact that these multi-path links, you might have multiple different paths you can take to get to the same destination. And depending on which one you're taking, things might look like they're working a bit. And that can really trip a person up. Let's just verify we know where this packet is headed. We should just see some ICMPs if we're right. There they are, great, terrific. So let's stop our ping, jump back here, and open up this switch one, show. Ethernet switching table, and we're looking for that MAC address and we have found it. And we see that it's logical interface that it is associated with. This is the ethernet switching table. So it is associated with an interface that it was learned on. That is AE4. We can assume that that's the forwarding interface for traffic that has this destination. AE4 back in our fabric is this link that comes up to RTR1. If you remember that is our backup verb. So let's go to RTR1 show route 10.0.10.1. And actually, before we do that, let's just show the RP. There we are, backup. We're dealing with this specifically. Show route 10.0.10.1. Where are you forwarding that traffic? Well, that ain't good. AE 1.10. That's the link coming back this way. So essentially what we have is we have traffic that wants to come up here and then forward up here and then forward back to the fabric and then forward back up here. That is no good. What could the problem be? Well, let's look at switch two. Show. ARP isn't gonna work because these are L2 devices, ethernet switching table. We see the same information, although in this case, that is correct. Traffic that reaches this switch will rightly forward out this interface to router 2. And if we look at router 2, we do a show route 10.0.10.1, it's local. It looks right. It's just that any traffic that hits this switch or any of the switches that might have learned a next hop or a forwarding L2 forwarding from that switch are going to basically send it to this router one, which is gonna to wanna to send it right back into the fabric. That seems broken. And like I said, this can see, things can look like they're kind of working, but kind of not working. And you might even do something like disabling ARP suppression and see a change in behavior. The problem here is not ARP though. I am going to snap my fingers and I'm going to fix all of this. And then I'm going to break it again with you. And in doing so, I'm going to show you what's happening and I can show you the tools that we can use to diagnose this specific problem and then commands and or configuration we can use to ensure that the issue is resolved. Like I said at the beginning, this is expected behavior. We just need to understand the behavior so we don't get blown up by it. So, all right, back on our host. Ta-da, look at that. So what broke and how did I fix it? And it didn't take long. If you're looking at the clock in the background over here, I don't think any time has passed. It's one command. So let's jump off the host. We don't really care about the host. We know it works. Uh, let's look at our switches again. And we're gonna start here because this is going to give us our first clue. Show ethernet switching table. And you'll note something that wasn't there before. And that is that our VIP address has a logical interface of ESI.1793. That is the ESI link that goes over here and that is correct. Router two is our master, so our path should look like this. And that's why everything's working right now. Okay, so what happened? I had a customer, a university, and they were swapping Cisco routers for Juniper routers. Where they were swapping them was right here in the core. Cisco routers were running VERP, Juniper routers running VERP, cut over the Juniper routers, suddenly things are broken, cut back to the Cisco routers, things seem like they were fine. 
I don't think this has any it's specifically Vert. Uh, I don't even know that it's specifically Juniper or Cisco. I just know that something in the workflow they were using or potentially something with the protocol behavior triggered something called Mac suppression. And I can simulate what that looks like right here. I will go into these routers and I'll flap the VIP for the VERP back and forth between them. I'll do that very quickly. I'll edit, edit, and I'll configure this so that it's sending the characters to both sessions at the same time. I'll hit this up a few times. We'll do a rollback because I've already put these configuration bits in. And just so you know what I'm doing here, if I do a show compare, I'm flap flipping the priority of 254 back and forth for this specific subnet, this verp group here just really fast over and over and over. The way the Mac suppression works is if you actually have a Mac that flips between two interfaces enough times within a set period of time, it will suppress the Mac. So I can now commit this and the master will go from that router two to router one for this specific network. And then when it's done, I'll go back and commit. And we'll just do this a few times. And I think one more time should do it. Right, right, great. Let's check to see if this works. And it might, again, this is so insidious. All right, it doesn't, good. I'll show you how I can kind of fix it in a moment, but that it's that it's still broken. <laughs> but right now, it's busted. Terrific. And all I've done is I've flipped the mastership priority. How do we know that this is what the problem is? If I go back here to this switch, or this switch, this could actually trigger on either of these. And I put in this command, which is show, and again, it gets cut off right here. But this is show EVPN database MAC address, then the MAC address of that VIP extensive. I see this right here, duplicate MAC suppression. This breaks the learning within the fabric for this VIP MAC address, which is the heart of all of our problems. Now we look at switch two, switch two looks fine. We see that it is not suppressed. But it could have been. It could have been on switch two instead of switch one. But as soon as that suppression triggers on one of these switches, the other switch isn't going to be learning. You know, I mentioned that we can fix this without really fixing it. I can do that by simply changing the mastership priority back. If I, right now, if I jump out of here, I show verb, we'll see that this router two remains the master and router one is backup. Great. So let's edit and do this one more time. Oh, wait, no, 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 all right, that wasn't enough up arrows. There we go. Let's make sure that I didn't get behind ourselves. Now, if I exit, show verb, this router one is the master. And if I go to this host, well, would you look at that? It's working, but the problem is not fixed. It's simply ameliorated because this router here, it's suppressing the MAC, which means it's not sending that MAC address using type two routes to any of the other members of the fabric. But if it receives this packet, it's gonna forward it along up AE4. It doesn't have that ESI lag information. It doesn't need to send it over here. And since this is the master, that works, that actually works. But the problem is not fixed. Again, this thing can look so funny from the outside. Want to break it again? Terrific. Just go back in. Right back. Hit edit. Roll back one. Commit. Exit. Show verb. We're back to this being the master. And if we go back into our host, broken again. Haven't dealt with the suppression yet. It's just broken. That's the behavior. How do we fix it proactively? 
uh, my recommendation would be to plan for this. Maybe if you're doing a migration, build into your maintenance window the command I'm about to show you. We know that suppression is on switch one, so we'll open up switch one. I'll show you what that looks like again, running the show EVPN database, MAC address, blah, 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 extensive. You can see you've got this duplicate MAC suppression here. And I'll write clear EVPN duplicate MAC suppression, enter. Show this again, no longer suppressed. Open up that host one, up arrow, problem solved. Just like that. Goodness, if you don't know to look there. You can also do this through configuration. Now, there are some considerations there. Uh, the configuration element, protocols EVPN, is right here, and it's actually deactivated in my configuration. But we can set an auto recovery timer. That timer is in minutes, and what it will do is, in this case, after five minutes, it will reset the max suppression state. The reason you need to do this is because it is persistent until a protocol reset or a reboot. So you'll either need to run the command or you will need to put this configuration in and only use this configuration if you're doing a bunch of commits and you think this might be triggered during a maintenance window and then you can deactivate it later. Or if you have a very high degree of certainty that the only time you'll see Mac moves that could trigger suppression are in situations that are not loops in your network or some other behavior that you would rightly want to prevent. That's it. I hope this has been helpful and not too wordy. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. And I promise we're getting to those campus videos real soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Take care.